morning. The mission we're on today is to go and form an introduction to sand driving. Some of the guys I chatted to said to me that they petrified of sand. They don't want to go to sand, they get stuck in sand. So we're going to go and form an intro just on how to drive, how not to get stuck and how to have fun. So join us, we'll be on the road shortly. I'm Greg Fonda Race. I've been leading expeditions and driving 4x4s in Africa for almost 40 years. Join me as I explore my new home country of New Zealand. I made this video for novice sand drivers or people that are a little bit intim intimidated by sand and tides and getting stuck and all sorts of things that play in their minds. Sand driving is really great fun. The first thing is your tire pressure, which we'll talk about in a bit more detail. So you have your tires deflated. You need a moderate speed. You'll notice I'm going fairly slowly. I'm not going too fast. You don't want to get airborne. You need momentum, on, especially on the inclines. If you make sharp turns and your tires are deflated, they can come off the rim. And you don't really want that. That's another whole exercise to get the tire back on. We don't drive on vegetation and a basic is you go straight up and straight down. If you do that, nothing can happen and you can drive up and down dunes and you will be fine. The next little point is be easy on the brakes and really apply brakes hard. You tend to get a little bit of a lump in front of your wheels and you'll find it difficult to pull away. So when you're stopping try and stop on the level or on a decline not on an incline it just makes it so much easier okay the tires are deflated we have found the easiest way is to take the valve out got a little valve tool and it's a lot quicker than just pushing the valve or um, even having to screw on a gauge all the time I then use an old-fashioned gauge that's made by Snap-on, so it's really good. Um, and this just pops out with the pressure. It's very easy to read the pressure when you take the valve out. So you just push it on, push it on, push it on, and stop when the pressure's right. The only disadvantage of taking the valve out is that if you let the valve go, you're unlikely to find it. And it's, it's going to shoot a fair distance, three, four meters. And by the time you find it, your tire will be flat and you'll have to pump it. So just always have a spare, a spare valve with you. The other thing that we use is a thing called a tire dog. You can see this that well, but on this gauge over here, it gives me, the gauge gives me my pressure and temperature in my tires at all times. And if the pressure drops, so if you take a tire off a room or you get a puncture, it starts beeping. So you know immediately before you damage the tire. They're a little bit quirky, but uh, it works fine. When I got here, my pressure was 2.4. So I'm working in bars. My pressure was 2.4. I've deflated the sand's wet, so I've gone down to 1.4. Uh, last week when I was here playing in the dunes, I went down to common 9. So that's about 11 psi. Uh, when you're on sand, the main thing to, to, to think about is if you're in very thick, soft, dry sand, make new tracks. So if there's five sets of tracks driving up a dune, make your own tracks. Because the soft sand gets churned up and you'll get, it's easier to get stuck. If the sand is moist, you stick in the tracks. So with dry sand, you make new tracks. Moist sand, you stick in the tracks. The reason for that is that the ground has already been compacted with the other vehicles. Another consideration is when you're driving in, the, in, in sand or anywhere off-road, you need some basics. So you need a decent rated recovery strap. So you don't go and borrow some rope from Granny and use that. It's not going to work. So you need a decent strap. The shackles that you use to attach the strap to the vehicles need to be rated. The next point is that you need recovery points on your vehicle. So I use my tow bar at the back, not the ball, 
it's got a pin that goes through the ball on the tow bar can break so you don't put it over the ball you put it onto through through the pin of the tow bar and that works you need anchor uh, you need recovery points in front the main points that you've got are tow points or they are tie down points when your vehicle gets imported they are not recovery points or snatch points then of course you need a spade if you get stuck you dig yourself out so you need the spade and having when you're driving in the dunes or on sand if you get stuck stop you always see these people sitting there they're stuck and the wheels are turning and it's just churning and they're digging deeper and deeper until the vehicle sits the chassis is sitting on the sand that's not a quick recovery anymore so as soon as you get stuck stop it's much easier to recover you if you're slightly stuck than if you're completely stuck In the intro I spoke about descents very briefly. The, the main things to consider is first go and have a look what's at the bottom of the descent. I went down a descent one evening we were driving dunes in the dark. I never noticed that there was a little dune in front of the base and I dug for probably four hours to get myself out. So go and have a look. Also the main rule is that you put the vehicle in low range Take your feet off the pedals and let the compression control your descent or use descent control or L1, L2, whatever you've got. Read the manual of your vehicle before you try a really, really steep descent. Ascents are a little different. Uh, the main thing we're going to consider is momentum. So as you watch this video, you'll notice I have very little momentum. I go a little way up and I get stuck. Then I reverse and I try again, but I have a little bit more momentum and I don't have any problems. It just makes it so much easier. I'm not talking about hitting the dunes at speed. I'm talking about just having a little bit of momentum to get you up the dune. It really makes a big difference. If you want to try and drive up a really steep dune, you might need quite a lot more momentum and also before you go up send somebody to the top let them have a look what's there that there's not another vehicle look what's on the other side it could be almost a vertical drop off or there could be bush and you go over the top and then you you're really stuck i've driven this track three or four times during the my filming of the video the first two times i pulled away and i got stuck i didn't have enough momentum i went back and tried again and then it worked makes such a difference when you're driving along and you're in thick sand and you're in tracks like I am now it's not easy to get out because if you turn you still plow along and your wheels are turned but you plow straight so what I was taught is while you're driving you jerk the wheel to the side like that and you get out of the tracks it really works well so you're driving along you jerk the wheel and your car jumps out of the track. I've tried that all over the place and it really, really works. <laughs> 